They've got a situation where they're going to have to try to make a play here, trailing one with 20 seconds to go. Let's see what Reggie Witherspoon diagrams up. The Bulls, yeah. have, the Bulls yeah. have not scored any points, Paul, I beg your pardon, in over four minutes. A four-minute-plus scoring drought. And Western has not exactly been lighting it up during this span either, but a little 5-0 run for the Broncos, and they're up by a point. And I, if I was a bet man, I would say that you try to get the ball to Mitchell Watt in this situation. Mitch has been really assertive and, and played terrific all night tonight. And you got to remember that Matt Stainbrook, although he's not in deep foul trouble, he's only got three, he would certainly give up a foul here if he was beat. Is this big shot Dave time? <laughs> Dave Barnett. Uh, we'll see. He made a habit of making big shots he's, late in the game. He's done it before. Oldham into the front court. Guarded by Douglas, takes it right, finds Phil's in right side, he pump fakes a three, drives to the free throw line, stops, turns around, tries a leaner, it's good! 58-57 Bulls. In it comes to Douglas, 10 seconds to play. Douglas down the floor, into the front court left, five seconds left. Douglas drives, tries a leaner over what? It's blocked away, Steinbrook recovers, lays it up, no good, but a foul. 0.4 seconds left, they call a foul, and Steinbrook is gonna go to the line with the Bulls only ahead by a point. And it's also on Mitchell Watt, it's his fifth. They did not, they did not call a foul on the initial drive, which Mitchell Watt got a piece of that shot. But oftentimes that happens, Josh, where you have two players converge and the shot gets missed and there's nobody on the weak side. And that's what happened. Matt Stainbrook standing on the other side of the rim got the loose ball, and I think that's probably, a, I, it looked like a pretty good call. I mean, it was a lot of contact. You know, sometimes- I thought there was a foul on the original drive, yeah, to be honest Yeah, sometimes they swallow their whistle in those situations, but I, I do, I agree. There was, an, there was an awful lot of contact. Cam Downing is gonna come in to replace the fouled out Watt. And so this is a very similar situation to what Western Michigan had Wednesday night at home against Akron. Leonard Whitfield went to the line with his team down one and six seconds left. He made one of two free throws. That game went overtime and Western Michigan lost. Well, I said it a, a couple minutes ago, neither team wants overtime and now the Bulls really don't want overtime because Mitchell Watt is now fouled out because that was his fifth. So they got McCray and Watt out of the game. They're checking the monitor, Josh, to look at the clock. Right. They want to see if the clock ran extra and it may have because it seemed like it took a long time before people even realized there was a foul call it was almost a mini celebration down there it was right in the student section they thought it was, the ball was just loose and the clock was going to run out and then I, there may be as much as like two seconds left uh, on the clock well Josh. the bull the bulls certainly want there to be some time left yeah right now in case stainbrook stainbrook makes one or two right now 0.4 seconds on the clock so as it stands right now, the Bulls are not going to have any chance at all. And now Stainbrook is at the line waiting to shoot free throws. Two of the officials are still at the monitor. Yeah, I don't think that's a bad thing for Buffalo. I don't either. I'd like him to stand there and think about it for a long time. And Alumni think, Arena is going nuts right now. If I were Steve Hawkins, I think what I'd be doing is having him sitting on the bench. Yeah, They're going to put more time up, I think. 1.1 1. 1 second. 1.1. 1. So they add on seven tenths of a second. Stainbrook is a 63% yeah, shooter. You read my mind. He has 15 points. This place is going bananas. The huge lefty with the first of two. Short! Well, most we could have is overtime at this point. And now Western Michigan calls their last timeout. Very interesting. They called their last timeout. Hey, now think about this, Josh. And this is a full timeout here, so we got a little time to digest this. Now think about this now. The Bulls don't have either Mitchell Watt or Javon McCray on the floor. They got a guy in Cameron Downing who's never been in this situation as a collegiate if he misses this shot in terms of boxing out. Just keep that in mind. This is this is an off, this is a Western team that crashes the boards, and you got a couple of guys that are not necessarily used to being in this situation. And remember, earlier in the half, there was a, re a, a free throw at that end that missed, and Hutchison grabbed an offensive board. And there's and it, with 1.1 second left, Josh, there's a lot of time for that ball to be grabbed, tipped, or, or you know, 
it, it's time to catch the ball, let's put it that way, and still go up with it on a miss. 1.1 second left. Stainbrook is one for three at the free throw line. The Bulls got to get on the floor here. The Bulls are still huddled up. Western Michigan onto the floor, but I think they came out of their huddle a little bit. Like a football coach trying to talk a field goal kicker into making a, a big one. Just gave it, the big man a pep talk and a pat on the rear end. Fans are going berserk at Alumni Arena. Stainbrook with a free throw to tie. No good! Rebound Barnett! And he's fouled. three seconds left. Barnett got fouled. Stainbrook missed them both. .3 seconds left, and Stainbrook is almost inconsolable out on the court right now. Boy, I feel bad for him in a way. Yeah. yeah. Barnett to the line with three tenths of a second left. Yeah, the big guy is, is in near tears, and and I don't care what side of the fence you sit on in this. You, you, you just feel bad for the young man. He's left it all out here for Western Michigan all game long. Comes into a situation that you play out in your driveway as a kid, the ball with two free throws and down a point, and both shots were dead on line, and both were about a quarter of an inch short. They, both, short -armed they both. both hit the front rim and came off, and, and I mean, tantalizingly, they could have fallen in. It was so close in terms of being over the front rim or not. And they are going to check the time here again, so we have another delay. Just I to wouldn't make be surprised sure. if they add on a couple of tenths of a second. So free throws have certainly but really, been a factor. At this point, you know what? If you're Dave Barnett, you probably maybe want to make the first and almost intentionally miss the second. There's three tenths of a second left. They leave it at point three. Well, I seconds. would miss it intentionally. Why not? Yeah. You can't. You have to tip it. So if you make it, you give Western a chance to throw the ball the length of the floor and potentially tip it in. Barnett with two points. So he I, is 0 for 2 at the free throw line. I would, I would really, if I'm the Bulls here, I would really want to make the first and miss the second intentionally. First of two up from Barnett and no good off the back room. The Bulls are now 8 for 19 at the free throw line. Western, a great free throw shooting team, only 10 of 17. Not, They've not shot free throws yeah. well either. But see, at this point, if you miss it, the only way it counts is a tip. You want to miss this, yeah. don't you? I really think oh. you want to miss this. 58-57, Buffalo, three-tenths of a second to play. Barnett's second free throw, airborne, good. 59-57, Stainbrook will inbound, chucks it to Douglas. He heaves it, count anyway. count. The Bulls win, 59-57. Friend, and uh, you know, I, I, I didn't want to say it, but you know, it felt like one of those games, the Bulls have kind of been living on the razor's edge of late, and this felt like one of those games that they just kept you know, they just, they just kept blowing opportunities to put this game away, and it's one of those that you feel like it's it's the, the other team's going to sneak in and steal your cheese on you right at the end. And, of course, Western had every opportunity to do that. If, if Stainbrook makes those two free throws, then that's exactly what would have happened. And Matt Stainbrook is, is pretty much inconsolable right now, and it's it's tough to see. I mean, you don't want to see that to happen, happen to any collegian. It obviously works out for the Bulls tonight, but... Boy, you think about it, if that had been a, a UB player in that situation, uh, the heartbreak is real, and, and this is a kid that just gives tremendous effort for Western every night, they, night in and night out. He so. had a double-double, 15 and 11, so yeah. without Stainbrook in this game, they wouldn't have been in it at the end anyway. No, no, tough situation, and and uh, th this this one goes to the Bulls with, with an asterisk a little bit with some breaks that really went their way uh, down the end. And you know what? I think the best crowd of the season, 4,561, the attendance. They came into play at the end big time they in did. this, making that noise while Stainbrook was at the foul line. Yeah, this place was absolutely electric as he shot those free throws, and they and they, they certainly they certainly made it tough on you know on Stainbrook and you know obviously a, a guy you know a a, a 290-pound guy, a tough situation to be in. But uh, the Bulls aren't going to give it back, I can tell you that. So eight wins in a row for the Bulls, and for the first time in school history, they sweep the West Division going 6-0. and The Bulls are 16-6 and overall, 9-2 and in MAC play. Western Michigan now has dropped four in a row, five of their last six. 
They are 10 and 15 overall and now 4 and 7 in MAC play. Our postgame show begins in a moment. Bulls 59, Western Michigan 57. You're listening to Buffalo Bulls basketball brought to you by Subway on the UB Basketball Network.